Welcome to Roundup Reviews, where I review a small handful of games that I've recently played. First up on the chopping block is Lies of P. Souls-like in the closest sense. None of this 2D Souls-like business of Blasphemous or Hollow Knight. This is a full-on 3D interconnected world in a dying fantasy setting with all the usual stuff with all the usual name changes including changing names of stats for some reason. Nobody has a patent on strength and dexterity, so there's no point in rebranding them to advance in technique, except of course me to open up another tab to figure out what the hell they do. This one's more of a Bloodborne clone than Dark Souls, and it's based on Pinocchio of all things, though it's more of a flavor change than anything else. Instead of fighting the undead, we fight puppets. Instead of Gurman, we have Geppetto. And instead of the doll, we have Sophia. That's the Blue Fairy. Seems like we could have renamed the characters to Curly, Larry, and Moe, and just as easily claims that it's based on the Three Stooges. Like all other Souls-likes, his attempt to stand out from the overcrowded Souls-like genre boils down to raising the bullshit difficulty. The event that leaps to mind for me was when I fought my way through an obstacle course of 50 enemies and finally saw the bonfire, I mean, I don't even remember what the game calls it. I saw the checkpoint just past a mini-boss, which wasn't strictly mini-boss, but it had 20 times more health than normal enemies, and killed me in two hits, so what the fuck else am I gonna call it? I ran past it, flailing my arms as it chased me, and that was how I learned that you can't rest at checkpoints if you're being targeted by enemies. I was swiftly powderized. I guess I'll just run through the enemies so I can fight it with all my health, I thought. Although all the enemies were in these cramped linear spaces, if I tried running past them, I was guaranteed to get hit by most of the fuckers. Got to the mean boss where he killed me in one stun locking combo. Tried it again, this time he knocked me off the rooftop where his fight took place, sending me into a completely new area that I had never been, desperately looking for a checkpoint with 5 HP and no healing items left, plunged into an actual boss fight that had no misty wall prior to it, and got mopped in 3 seconds. And maybe it was poor timing for the game, since I played it mere days after finally beating Melania in Elden Ring, but I was just so sick of Souls like combat and quit the game altogether. The next game I want to talk about was Headbangers, Rhythm Royale, the silly, goofy, tongue-in-cheek pigeon rhythm game. Fuck man, I can physically feel its desperation for players to meme it the way they did Untitled Goose Game. The way their heads wobble about like a spring doorstop, the black dot eyes, the bean beak mouths, and chipmunk voice felt over every fucking voice line in the game. I don't think I've ever wanted to strangle pigeon more in my life. I don't know why the visuals of this cartoon bird game intended for Kitty has got me so fired up, so let's pivot to gameplay. See, if you bought a game with the subtitle Rhythm Royale and are expecting a rhythm game, you can go fuck a pigeon, you big chip stealing idiot. In reality, it's a collection of elimination mini games like Fall Guys, except 10% of them are rhythm games and the other 90% are Simon Says. Yes, you're playing Simon Says to a rhythmic beat, but you could mute the audio and it wouldn't be any harder. Indeed, I did play with the audio muted and still made it to the final round. In fact, not once while playing did I ever not make it to the final round. And I don't believe that's because of my skill, as my high scores on Muse Dash would embarrass a slug on anesthetics. I genuinely don't know if the games are populated with lobbies of bots meant to boost you up into the final round and keep you playing, or if kids with no opposable thumbs are just queuing up just to lose in the first round. Oh, and how could I forget that there's a battle pass, but that's par for the fucking course, isn't it? Paired with the equally foreboding Season 1 tag on the title screen. Now, if you're here assuming that all I do is shit on games, then you're two-thirds correct, because the last game I want to talk about is Cassette Beasts, more specifically, the Peer of the Unknown DLC, which I've mistakenly referred to as Perilous Peer and Peer into the Unknown on multiple occasions. Might as well spoil now that I wouldn't have bought DLC for a game that I didn't already like. In fact, Cassette Beast was a game that I initially brushed off as just another Pokemon clone. The ones that have neat ideas but always fail to capture the magic that Pokemon generated 20 years ago and is still using to drain the money of its audience like a parasitic leech that inflicts Stockholm Syndrome. But after seeing it on Game Pass, I decided to give it a try, and upon fighting the first major boss of the game, I got stricken with that tragically rare jolt of realization that I was having fun against my will. I wasn't entirely keen on the monster designs at first, but over time they really started to grow on me, possibly the aforementioned Stockholm Syndrome. But enough about the base game, let's download some content. The DLC gave me exactly what I wanted, more cassette beasts. It's a pretty isolated and self-contained area, but I just love the haunted carnival aesthetic. And with the game's level scaling option, I was able to keep every fight interesting against my level 90 ass by making every single monster also level 90. All of the monster designs were great, with a few having unique and interesting battle techniques, like that one that changes its typing every turn, something that makes a much greater difference in a fight than it does in Pokemon, because type matchups have greater effects beyond does more stroke less damage. Gwen was a fun character, although I really wasn't incentivized to explore in order to progress her story. Instead, I was exploring because it was fun to do, and I wanted to catch all the new monsters and make a team of only new ones, which I did. And it was fun. Fun. F-U-N. Adjective. Amusing. Entertaining. Or enjoyable. Look it up, games industry. 